Today I want to talk about inspiration, motivation, discipline, goals, and goal setting. In the end, this is the stuff that really determines how far you're going to get on the instrument. More than anything else, it comes down to this. But it's kind of tricky because the specifics are different for different people. So what I thought I'd do today is I'll share some stories with you from my own experience, and then we'll try to extract the principles out of them, and then you know maybe you'll be able to see, gain some insight, and see what would apply to you and, and what might be a benefit. When I was a kid, I mean, I liked music, listening to music, just like anyone else, but it wasn't like I thought, oh my God, I, I have to do that. It wasn't like that at all. So I want to go back all the way to when I was about maybe eight or nine years old, my mom was a singer, an opera singer, and so she'd be practicing in the house, and I'd, I'd hear her sing, and, and, uh, and then she also played piano. At some point around then, I think she got it in her head that, that I should be, you know, given an opportunity to learn music, so she sat me down and started to teach me piano. But I didn't have a, a great interest in it, and, you know, I could, um, you know, I played a little bit out of some beginner book, but... It, I didn't really stick with it. It didn't really uh, do much for me, and um, and she didn't push it too hard. So that kind of passed. Then probably around the time I was 10 or 11, uh, one day I remember quite clearly hearing uh, Kiss, Rock and Roll All Night. Uh, the song came on a Top 40 station, an AM radio Top 40, and it didn't sound anything like the stuff that was you know, typical top 40 back then in the 70s. And um, I heard that and the guitar tone really riveted me and I just stopped. I listened like, wow, that's cool. You know, what is that? But I still didn't, you know, run out and buy a guitar or anything, you know. Now I did play music uh, in, in band. So that wasn't a great thing of inspiration either. That was more or less like my mom was trying to encourage me to play music she told me I should, and in school they say, okay, who wants to be in music? So I thought, you know, I'd rather, you know, sit and play music for an hour than, you know, sit and be bored, you know, reading or something else. You know, the rest of school is kind of all the same, sitting in a desk and reading, and I thought playing an instrument seems better than that, so it was the lesser of two evils, sort of. Anyway, clarinet wasn't really my choice either. It was more or less like... One of my older brothers had tried uh, playing a clarinet, and apparently that's the instrument that was laying around at my house. So when I said, yeah, maybe I'll be in the band, they said, oh, here's your instrument. It's a clarinet. <laughs> you know, so I guess I'm playing a clarinet. I think, uh, I think I do remember all of us, all of at least all the boys in sixth grade lined up to, to play the drums. You know, I mean, it, it, that, that was a bit of a problem. I remember that. When I was 11, I went to a friend's house and he had a bass guitar there and I thought oh that's kind of cool and he picked it up and he played the riff of Iron Man and he said hey you should get a guitar and then we could you know be in a band or something and I thought well that's kind of a far-fetched idea I haven't even touched a guitar and I have no idea how to play it you know I know it's going to take some time to figure that stuff out but I did mention it to my mom and and she took it upon herself to find somebody who did play guitar, pick out a guitar, a beginner guitar, and, and get it for me um, a couple of months later. But I didn't at that point have this great earth-shattering, you know, I'm inspired to play guitar. And that's, that's my main point here. The inspiration started as just a common interest, you know, just like, you know, that might be cool to learn how to do that. Let's explore it. So I got this beginner guitar and I started playing and I would, you know, just play a little here and there and I was playing stuff that wasn't too inspiring either. It was like Alfred Book One, you know, playing these three note songs of, I guess you could call them songs or whatever, these little melodies. And, you know, not terribly inspiring, but I did have enough interest to stick with it. And I was still in band, still playing clarinet. My ear had developed enough, and I'm listening to you know music. I'm I'm hearing these Kiss songs, and one day I decided 
hey, I could learn um, this song, that riff, by ear. You know, I heard it was Black Diamond, and and I heard the octave and the fifth in there. I didn't know it was an octave and a fifth then, but I I heard the notes and I started hunting for them on the guitar and I found them. So I started you know this long process of developing my ear at that point there was no way of course you know there were no tabs uh, nobody um, published anything you know about about this music in the 70s so anyway I started learning the stuff that appealed to me as I learned I got deeper and deeper into it and I started to appreciate the music even more I mean I already liked the music but being able to to get inside it and actually play the stuff, I found that inspiring. And the better I got, the more inspired I became. Inspiration is something that grows over time. You know, it starts maybe just with a curiosity or uh, a passing interest, and then you kind of get into something, and the deeper you get into it, you more the more is there that you discover, and you start getting into it more. And that's what happened to me. So I was learning stuff by ear, you know, pretty much all the, you know, rock and hard rock bands in the in the 70s. And and I was enjoying that and my progress was I, I guess I'd say fairly slow, maybe moderate progress, but then I hit what was my first real major inspiration was Van Halen, the first Van Halen album. I heard that and that just lit a fire under me. I was like, what is that? That sounds awesome and you know, the power and the precision of it, and it was just, you know, electrifying, for lack of a better word. But I got uh, I got into that, and of course, learning it by ear, you know, a record player, you know, a little at a time, and trying to find the notes. And, you know, it, it wasn't like I'd sat down and learned the album, you know, all at once, because, you know, I wasn't that good a player or didn't have that developed of an ear at that point, but I learned you know, some of it, and then I got better at it, and I'd learn more, and I'd learn more. And uh, that went on for a while, and I also got myself in an, into a, a garage band, you know, at the time, and we were writing music. So this was the next step, uh, as on the one hand, yeah, you go for the inspiration, the things that, that make you, that light the fire in you, in, in your passion, if you, if you have that, Sure, go and do that. Obviously, that's that's a really important thing. And then the other thing is that you need to set up your yourself for success in the sense that put yourself into a situation that's going to keep you moving. Okay, so one way to keep moving is I keep finding things that inspire me and I keep learning them. So I learned Van Halen, Randy Rhodes, uh, heard a live recording of him, learned every note off that. Then uh, Al Di Miola was a big inspiration. And uh, then I got into classical music um, after, after Randy. I started uh, learning stuff by Bach and, you know, got deeper into all these things and my desire gradually increased, you know, more and more and more. Then I got myself into bands, put myself in playing situations as much as I could, and, you know, that's fun too. But these bands weren't really making any money, so I decided to start teaching part-time at a music store. And again, that kind of put me in a situation where I've got a guitar in my hands and I'm, I'm learning as I'm teaching. You know, people are coming in and I'm learning stuff by ear and I'm showing it to them. So that, that also keeps me progressing in a different aspect. You know, if you want to learn something well, a great way to learn it well yourself is to teach it to someone else. So that's the situation I found myself in and that, you know, filled uh, a lot of the the capacities, you know, the knowing of the scales and developing my ear, all that was really developed because that was what I started to do. You know, I'm teaching uh, to make a part-time income for myself, you know, not because I, I love teaching, I, you know, it was all right, but I was just teaching, you know, to kind of make ends meet because it was the best option, you know, lesser of two evils again. I mean, I, would, I wouldn't have done it at all if I had been successful or my idea of successful in a band, you know, but that wasn't happening, so I had to do something else, and yet it was close enough to playing that it had these great benefits and, and developed 
other aspects of my musicianship. So I think the moral of that story is it's not just about inspiration. I mean, that's that's the starting point. And of course, you want to nurture that. That's critically important. That's kind of the centerpiece. But you also need to make choices about how you're going to put yourself in a situation that keeps you playing. So, you know, if you're just playing, practicing in your bedroom and it's getting old, you know, you need to get out there. Maybe you need to start recording or maybe you need to find some other musicians and, and start playing some cover songs, play in a band. You know, you need to take the next step. And whatever the next step looks like for you, you know, uh, you have to choose from options that seem realistic that you can, you know, employ. Usually, what will happen is you'll take a step, you get into a new situation, it'll have consequences, and it can keep you growing in some capacity. The trick, though, I've found is that you need to have the right balance of the right things that keep you, you know, on the, the positive growth path. Because, you know, if I, for example, if I taught too much, I found that it burned me out because I'm not really a teacher at heart. I'm a musician at heart who happens to be able to teach. And as long as I'm progressing as a musician, doing stuff that really ignites me, then I'm, I'm all about being able to, you know, put it in a structure and show, you know, somebody, you know, how to do it. And, and that's great. But if it's all about just creating structures to teach and the ideas themselves feel stale to me, well, then I'm, I'm kind of sunk because my inspiration falls out the bottom and, and I just get bored and bitter and, you know, nothing, nothing creative is, is going on. I'm a person who needs to keep, you know, moving forward and breaking new ground for myself. And this really comes down to Socrates, you know, he said, know thyself, that, that's the bottom line, and, and it really is. If you know, you know, what you need in order to keep progressing, in order to be happy, you need to have a certain balance. And the only way we know is by discovering, you know, by the impact. You know, we do something and we kind of have to check in and say, well, how did that work for me? Do I really enjoy doing this? Um, maybe I should stop doing it, or maybe I should do it differently. Maybe I need to combine it with something else that I'm doing. You know, we, we might start by taking the lesser of two evils, you know, and then we discover, oh, this is cool to do. Oh, I can meet this need in the world, maybe by applying some of that. But we have to keep checking in so that we nurture our inspiration because you're constantly changing. You know, I'm changing. You're not the same person you were a year ago. Your motives change, your interests change. And just because a certain guitar player was an inspiration to you for, you know, a period of years doesn't necessarily mean it's going to continue to be. You might need a different inspiration, you know, and so you constantly have to reassess. When we move forward from where we are to the next step, whatever it is, and then we have to make decisions about you know, what we're going to move toward, well, some of those decisions are under our control. You, know, you can choose to go you know, teach or put a band together and choose to write songs and you know, that, that kind of thing, and, and that'll set you on a direction. And then things will happen, like life will throw opportunities or the lack of opportunities, and you might not get where you wanted to be. You might have to take a left turn and then another turn, you know, Cause, because we, we always have to choose uh, what we're going to do from the options that are available to us. You know, you might say to me, I'd like to play at the Super Bowl, you know, let's just throw something out there big. Well, you know, that's great. Um, but I don't have the opportunity to do that. And I have to choose today, what am I going to do right now? Every day you have a choice 
of what you're going to do. You know, I'm going to practice. I'm going to, you know, refine my abilities. I'm going to learn something about music. I'm going to take this opportunity or that opportunity, or I'm going to write a song. I'm going to record a song. I'm going to send, I'm going to publish that song on the internet or whatever. You know, there are options that you have. Maybe the thing you really want is not an option, at least not right now. So, you know, you, it's fine to have that, you know, you kind of hold that in, in the back of your mind or, you know, you know, put it out front, you know, think I'm moving toward that. But what it really boils down to is on a day-by-day -day basis, what actionable thing can I do today that's going to feed my inspiration and move me in the direction I want to move? Now, some years later, I was teaching at a music store, and the manager of that music store, a friend of mine, um, he was hearing me play some Bach piece or something, and, and he came up to me and he said, you know, I really admire that. I, I wish I could play like that. I wish I had your discipline, that was the word he used, to, to sit down and do that. And I was, like, really confused because I'm thinking, you think I'm disciplined? That's not discipline at all. You know, I am just doing what I want to do. I'm sitting down and focusing on it because it's inspiring me. So I was focused, but I didn't really have a ton of self-discipline. And this is uh, what I want to talk about right now is that discipline versus inspiration. I see the two as kind of like the carrot and the stick. The inspiration is what you're moving toward. That's the carrot. And discipline is sort of forcing yourself you know, to do something that you know is good for you, but you don't really want to do it. And I think there's a role for discipline, but it's not really like I should, um, you know, learn this or that because it's good for me, or I should get through this method or that method. I think that your goals need to be informed by what inspires you. That's what, you know, what you're chasing. And the music that inspires you is really what you should be moving toward, and that's what you should be learning. Now, there is a role for discipline, though, like I said, and where discipline comes in is if you are so scattered that you can't stick with something for, for a very long time. Even though it inspires you, you find you kind of veer off in, into the ditch and start doing other things. Well, then maybe you need to you know, set a timer to say, okay, I'm going to lear learn this song or spend 10 minutes on this, and then I'm going to spend 10 minutes on that and you know, learn this other bit. Uh, another area that might require some discipline is the notion that you should practice every day if you want to continue to get better. Now, every day is probably not necessarily realistic, but, you know, five or six days a week would be, you know, a, a pretty good target. And if you can do that, you could play, even if it's a half hour a day or something, uh, having the discipline to sit down, because, you know, you don't always want to sit down, at least for myself. I would often, even as, as much as I want to play, um, I would not always feel the inspiration to want to sit down to play. But if I tricked myself into saying, you know, I'm just going to sit down for 10 minutes, I'll just play for 10 minutes and, you know, go over something I learned or just learn this lick, just something small. Inevitably, what I find is that once I get into those 10 minutes, then I'm there for a half hour or an hour, you know, or more. Another thing that you might want uh, to use a little discipline is if you only have a few minutes to play because you have an appointment or you have something else to do, you might say, well, it's not worth it for me to sit down and, and practice. But how much practice do you expect to get in the next 10 minutes? You know, well, 10 minutes of practice, that's all you're going to get. And if you have 10 minutes and you spend that 10 minutes playing, I guarantee you do that over and over here and there, and it's going to add up. The value of practice is much better uh, to do repeatedly at different times than it is to stack it up all at once. So if you practice six hours one day and then you didn't practice for six days, you know, you'd get something. But if you practiced an hour a day for six days, you would get much, much more benefit out of that because it's going through the process, picking it up, warming up to it, getting your fingers to reacquaint. That repetition is actually uh, what, what uh, makes you better. 
you know, it's, it's the repetition and then resting, coming back to it again. And it's the back and forth that actually makes the big difference and instills everything into muscle memory. So you got 10 minutes, you know, don't think that it's not useful time. Go ahead and jump in and do it. Now, sometimes people might be inspired by a particular player, a very, you know, technically proficient player, and they don't have the chops to be able to do that. Now, what do you do with that? Well, I am a big believer that there's no wasted practice. If you are inspired by some piece of music, go ahead and attempt to learn it. But recognize that if it's way over your head, you're not really going to be able to make it work. You're not going to be able to really get it down or, or don't expect to play it well. So if you you know, maybe you learn the riffs or you know, learn the whatever, the lead lines or whatever it is. And you have, you're kind of giving yourself a break and you're thinking, well, I'll only, you know, I'm, I'm doing it slow. As long as you feel like you're making some headway with it, I think that uh, you can use the inspiration of the music to, you know, to keep pulling you forward. But when it reaches the point where it doesn't feel anymore like like it's calling you, like you've been, you know, you'd be beating your head against the wall for a while and you're kind of getting a little sick of that, that um, process and you've, you've taken it as far as you can right now. This is where I think a lot of people think they need discipline. And actually, you're much better off to stop. You're much better off to go learn something else, take a break from it, and keep variety in your playing. You see, as you go to learn something that's very difficult, you, you can only play it to the level of your general technique ability. And you can use those, those things to increase your technique, but it'll only come up a little at a time. So as it comes up, you've got to recognize, well, I don't want to keep beating my head against the wall. You get diminishing returns. So you, you take a few steps, you take a little benefit, and then you move away and you do something else. It's good to have variety in your practice. You don't want to be constantly beating things to death because as you build muscle memory, what's happening if you just keep repeating the same thing is you're ingraining the tempos that you're playing, you're ingraining probably the errors that you're also playing, you know, the, the reasons that it's not sounding great. Well, you're repeating those things too. And so you don't want to get too locked into it. So don't think that discipline is, is always a good thing. You know, sometimes enough is enough. Now I want to talk a little bit about motive because everyone's got different motives and probably a mix of motives to be honest, you know. Some of us, you know, really want to prove something to ourselves or to someone else or everyone. You know, some of us just just really like music and just enjoy that. We want to want to include that. Some people um, kind of just need a creative outlet and they, they find that to be to be cool. Of course, I already talked about the motivation in regard to what I was saying is inspiring. That is, you know, playing the music that you like you know, your favorite bands, your favorite songs and stuff. There's a level of motivation that happens, you know, when you can do that. And that touches on another thing that's, that's very motivating, seeing your own progress. Obviously, that's motivating. As long as you're making progress, you know, that's great. But that can be a bit of a problem, too, because if you're only motivated by your improvement, what do you do when that stalls? You know, you reach a plateau and you don't know how to keep moving forward. Well, you know, there are a lot of reasons why plateaus happen and, you know, I can help people get through those kind of barriers. But if you don't have the resources and you don't know how to get through it, you know, then you start, you know, hitting that wall and then that's discouraging. And it's at those times that you really need to manage your motivation, which is to say, you know, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Don't, don't put all your, your motivation, your hopes on the fact of your improvement. Yeah, that's a plank. What about music? What about the, the interest of music? You know, what about the enjoyment of playing, um, playing in a band or, or writing songs, you know, or learning some new songs or learning a new solo, learning a new lick? You know, 
you want to keep all of these irons in the fire, I, I think of them. Each, each one of these is kind of like um, a different tool that you can pick up to fire up your motivation in a slightly different way. And when one kind of stalls, it's okay, you know, let it stall, but jump to something else. Don't just say, okay, you know, I'm done, I'm not going to play anymore. You know, you can, you can jump in and find something else that's inspiring. And that kind of leads us into the discussion about goals. Because a lot of people will have a goal, I want to be a competent player, I want to be a great player, and they'll have this kind of vague idea maybe what that means, but it's not very specific, and if they feel like they're making headway toward it, whatever it is, you know, that's good. And if they're feeling like it's stalling or they're not getting there, it, it's very discouraging. So uh, the goal itself is part of the pro or can be part of the problem. So let's talk about goals. I like to separate goals into two categories. The goals that I actually have control over and the goals that I don't have control over. Because there are some things that I would like to achieve, but they're really not up to me, you know. You can't set a goal to say, you know, I want 100,000 streams because that's up to other people deciding that they want to listen to what you have. Now, I suppose, you know, you could buy the streams or whatever. I mean, there's all sorts of ways around things these days, of course, but it doesn't, it doesn't really mean anything. But in any case, you know, if you want 100,000 fans, let's, let's say it that way. Now, that's, again, something that you can't really directly control. Now, you can influence, which we'll talk about in a minute, but you can't control it. On the other hand, there are goals that you can control. Goals like, I'm going to play six days this week, totally under your control. I'm going to practice and, and look for improvement on this technique or that technique. Again, that's under your control. So, uh, the first thing about goals is that uh, the ideal goal is to set a goal that is something that you have control over. As long as you set goals like that, that's a good thing. For, for many years, you know, my goal was, you know, I wanted to be signed as a recording artist. Now for me, for some reason, you know, I had the opportunity to, to funnel my music into the instructional, you know, world and... I did that, but I was also in bands, I was also writing music and doing all that kind of stuff too, but for some reason, just bad timing constantly, you know, one thing after another, it just never worked, it always fell apart, and sometimes, you know, right at, right at the critical moment when it looked like everything was, was going to work, finally. But that goal of getting signed you know, was very frustrating to me and very um, depressing because every time I got close to it, you know, it failed. And the problem is that I'm not in control of that. And I realized when, for example, I took a project to, a, you know, a, a record label and, and they, they weren't interested, shot it down because they didn't like the, the way the singer inflected, you know, the, the tone of his voice. Now, um, that's kind of a minor detail, it seems to me, as a musician. You know, that's not what really makes great music. It's not the singer's inflection, but that was the judgment of the person who was holding the keys to the kingdom of the recording industry at that time, as, as at least the, to the access that I had. And so, it's up to them, and they said no. Now. Later, got a different singer, worked around, that opportunity was no longer available, you know, and then things change and so forth. So the, the bottom line, though, is that if I take that on as my failure, I failed to achieve my goal, I take that on as my failure because somebody else made a decision, you know, that's, that's really not on me. And I am feeling a lot more empowered when I make decisions to have goals that are things that I can actually achieve. So that's the first thing I'd suggest when you set goals is set goals that are achievable by you without anyone else. 
you know, involved. So make it a near-term goal, make it short-term, and make it measurable. Now, I can hear some of you saying, you know, but, you know, what's wrong about having a, a big vision, a long-term goal? And I would say, well, there's nothing wrong with it. It's great. You want to know the direction that you're headed, you know, what your ultimate dream might be, but a dream is not really a goal. So basically what you want to do is you want to set up your goals in, in things that you can control that are near short-term and measurable by you that are lined up in that direction of your final you know, dream vision of where you want to move. So you know, if your next goal gets you closer to that ultimate direction and that ultimate vision, well, that's great. But then you want to kind of pull your attention back and, and be focused more you know, on, on the next steps, close short-term goals, even though you also have in your awareness that they're all lined up to move you in the direction you want to move. You don't really need to set deadlines for getting to the ultimate place that you want to be because the truth of the matter is there is no ultimate place you're going to be. You're just going to keep moving through life and it's a process and you move in a certain direction and you don't know what opportunities are going to show up to you. You're not in control of that, okay? You're in control of what you do and you're in control of when an opportunity shows up, how do you respond to it? You know, do you, do you make the effort? Do you not make the effort? You know, do you say yes to this band or no to that band or, you know, whatever. But you're not in control of, of the things that come at you. You can only respond to the opportunities that do show up. Also, in regard to measurability, I'm a big believer that if you're going to have short-term goals, they should be things that you can measure, that you can be specific about. So this kind of involves being a little organized. You might even think of it as being disciplined, but I don't think it takes a lot of discipline to do this. But if your goal, for example, is to improve your technique, you know, you might make a measurement, you know, you put a click on how fast am I playing that? What is a comfortable speed? And then, you know, you log that. You can put a date and what the tempo was that is comfortable for you for that particular song or, or lick or whatever it is. And then over time, you'll have that in black and white and you can see what your improvement is. You know, the difference between dissatisfaction and fulfillment is often as simple as having a reasonable expectation and having that expectation fulfilled. If my expectations are way up here and I achieve this, I'm going to be disappointed. But if my expectations are here and I achieve this, well, I'm going to be really happy. And, you know, you might say, well, no, I think it's a good idea to have really high standards. I, I'm not saying you don't have high standards. That's the direction. The direction is high standards. The short-term goal is something that you want to set a reasonable expectation for. You know, don't tell yourself that you're going to practice eight hours a day if you know, you, that's not the way your life is set up and, and you've chosen to only allow six or four hours or two hours, you know, whatever that is. You know, set your expectations, uh, make them reasonable. This is one of the problems with this idea of saying, oh, it's my goal to be a great guitar player. I want to play as well as my idol, you know, this guy or that guy or whatever it is. Well, again, that is a very kind of a vague and fuzzy idea. It's not specific. And therefore, it's really not a goal, you know. So the, the problem with that as a goal is that you never even know when you're going to get it. If you're going to get it, how do you know when you get there? Because when you, when you actually do get closer to that direction, you realize that it looks a lot different than what you thought it looked like. You know, a lot of people ask me things like, you know, well, how long does it take for me to get really good? Well, what do you mean by good? I mean, what do we, you know, and, and how do you know that when, when you're there because your standards rise right along with you and you probably want to get even better, you know? And so, so there really isn't a, you know, some place where suddenly you just wake up one day and you realize that, you know, 
I can play, you know, it's, it's, everything is a process. Everything is, is moving toward better and better. And as long as you keep your inspirations diversified, you know, don't burn out on any one thing, don't overdo any one thing, you know, keep yourself progressing, stay in it. If you stay in it and you keep moving toward your direction, you'll definitely get there, you know. Now, of course, what is there? Well, you know, maybe maybe it'll just keep staying ahead of you the whole way because, you know, you want to get better and that's totally fine. As long as you're in your inspiration, you're always going to be like enjoying what you're doing and passionate about it. So, you know, thinking that somehow there's some goal or milestone um, and that that's like the be all end all, get that out of your head. It doesn't exist. You know, uh, there are milestones and you'll hit milestones. You know, you, you might not hit a milestone that you that you wanted. I mean, there's milestones I didn't hit that I wanted, but there's plenty of milestones that I did hit. And, and you'll, you'll get those, and they will be the evidence of, of the success of your journey. And it's not to get somewhere that you're done. You know, the whole point of the journey is, is in taking the journey. You know, that's, that's what, it is, what it's about. And as long as you're doing that and you have that mindset, you're going to be enjoying everything that you're doing along the way. And that's a successful journey.